you guys all uh, come back to your senses, wake up, whatever you want to call it. You're in some sort of a, a large, spacious room. There's a lot of comfortable chairs and stuff in there. All the the furniture looks very old timey to all of you. Also outside, uh, normal traffic you is kind of like a, a hum, but the traffic here is more of a chunk, 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 which uh, definitely uh, just screams horses. To you. It sounds like there's a lot of noise in Jesse's world. <laughs> it sounds yeah. like. Um, you can mute them. yourself until they get out, Jess. Okay, thank you. It sounds like uh, there's there's a, a lot of horse traffic and such going by, and it definitely smells like there's a lot of horse traffic going by. The lighting in here seems to be oil lamps and such. Uh, those who have been to the White Dove before know exactly where you're at. There's a uh, butler standing by. Uh, he's dressed very nicely. And uh, uh, it seems that they're, they're, he's in the process right now of uh, serving tea, coffee, or stronger drinks, if you'd prefer. All right. All right. He says, will there be anything else, sir, to uh, uh, Freddy? Uh, any bacon, or are you still out? He glares at you, turns on his heel, and leaves. <laughs> Maybe you should order some. All right, and talk. Um, yeah, I'll I'll go look for our guests, so to speak. See where Which they are. Which guests? The two of them. Oh, they're in the or? room with you. Yes. Oh, okay. All three cool. of you are safe. You you All start right. to get up. You look and go. Ah, they're here. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee with All you. Right, well, that works. I re I recognize Doc Yang, so I'm like, nice to meet you again, Doc. Hope everything's well with you. Yes. Uh, uh, so far, so good. Uh, it's good to see you are well, oh, reasonably yes. speaking. Real quick, uh, let's see. Corey, please describe your character. Uh, Middle-aged, Japanese-American, sort of clean-cut, professional, uh, decently built, um, you know, average sort of looking guy. Hmm. Uh, I can't... Uh, could you please describe Freddy? Uh, basically, the picture on Roll20 is what I look like. I'm uh, more on the skinny side. Not like anorexic or anything, but relatively fit, but not like muscle toned or anything. I'm currently wearing a an inside out turned jacket <laughs> with a black, or a black inside out turn jacket with white trims along the edges and just normal pants and shoes. And I have a um, a sword on my side and some kind of, well, okay, I'll just tell you what it is, a lightsaber on my belt on the other side. You oh. discover sitting, sitting with a, uh, a sword on in a regular chair. <laughs> Such a pain in the ass. You pretty much have to take the scabbard off and lay it across your lap. Yeah, yeah. Corey will vouch for this from years of Nero. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Jess, could you describe your character, please? Um, yeah, sure. So I'm like, I want to say like early 20s, so like adult, but young adult. And um, I have mm, I want to say just like basic clothes on like basic street clothes like nothing special unless I still have those clothes from Asylum <laughs> yeah do I still have those on uh, probably yes that was the last time you played you were wearing those so yeah. do, you, what, do you say lunatic across them or something no no, no she had a uh, like Mine an order says orderly. Ah, yeah. okay, orderly. Excellent. She's wearing uh, plain white clothes that say orderly on them. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll well, you'll get new clothes at some point. I think I'm dressed currently like a like a, a, a 1800s cowboy gentleman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. 
So I, it, it appears that you guys are in a quiet place. Uh, well, relatively quiet. You've got some street noise outside. Nobody seems to be messing with you, so you're able to just drink <coughs> coffee or alcohol and chat, if you wish. So I, I turned over to the new person I haven't met before, and I'm like, my name's Aeolus, but everyone calls me Freddy because apparently no one knows how to pronounce my name. Um, who might you be? Um, thank you. I'm Allie. Uh, I, I, um, when, when I first started here, I was with Allie. Um, we were in the asylum together. Oh, um, you've been to the gentleman. asylum. Yeah. Tell yep. me about it. Did you, uh, see the screaming lady? Um, I <laughs> like I want to say yes, but I don't know. Give me like a minute. Cause uh, when I was there, I just I just left. I, I just saw <laughs> bloody footprints on the ground. And I was like, nope, just I'm out. Yeah, I don't think we saw a screaming lady. No, we saw a, a baby on a ceiling. Um, we saw. A lady who is being treated for postpartum depression. Um, her story was pretty basic. It seemed like her family had committed her. Um, she had had a child but didn't know where it was. She was severely depressed but uh, was not aggressive in any way, really. Um, uh, we met a conspiracy theorist, a guy who believed in. The, the aliens were coming. I, I posited that he was likely from either like the Roswell era, era or in that time period. <clears throat> um, we met. Well, some weirdo in a pink suit. I think was. Wait, 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 wait. Pink suit. Did he have weird teeth? He might have. He was like sucking on a baby bottle or something like that. And you saw him in the asylum? Yes, he was when we were there. Yeah, you might want to. His. I've seen him before. He uh, tried to kidnap me or something. I don't know. It's. It was. A, it, it was. It was actually in this. In this building, so um, I suggest uh, if you see him, stay away. Just, just FYI. Got so it. um, can you uh, since uh, Doc, I know a bit about you already. Uh, obviously, you're a doctor, but uh, Ali, what? Uh, tell me about yourself. Where are you from? What? What can you bring to the table? So to speak. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a forensic doctor. So basically, I work with um, basic medicine. The cats are doing something really weird. I have no idea what's going on. Um, anyway, so um, I basically work with, um, I think it was like how and why people died and um, that, you know, forensic but medicine <laughs> if that makes sense I don't so know you're like a doctor detective is that one yeah uh, yeah okay. can you do you know how to use a gun or a sword um, any weapons can you punch someone really hard in the face <laughs> <laughs> I think I know, I know how to use, like, basic weapons, like, I know how to use, like... A pistol. Uh, yeah, and... A knife. Clubs and, like, yeah. No helping, Corey. No <laughs> helping. I can help. No helping. Alright. And what about, um, obviously you know about medicine and those sorts of things. Um, are you skilled in just... For no apparent reason, business or bargaining, or do you have any? 
I don't think so. Do you have any knowledge so. of spices? No, no, okay, no, no, no. Okay. Just, just check. <laughs> right, well, um, but, well, I don't know what the two of you oh, know about me. Please get rid of the the room. Please get rid of the room. Please. Just push him out into the hall. The door, <laughs> well, okay. I'm on the top bunk of a bed, so I can't really do that. I'll get, but... I'll get him. I'll get him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, I got the screaming one. That's always nice. Uh, how many pets do you have there? In the room, I don't know. No, I mean total. Uh, four. Good oh, God. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> it it, 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 oh, it would. It would. I'd go fucking nuts. I, one is bad enough. We've got one here and it's really quiet and I fucking hate it. So yeah. Yeah. It, it, that explains the headphone cat thing though. She's turning into one because all the rest are peer pressuring her. Oh, uh, I know exactly what superhero she would be. Aha. <laughs> well, okay, we only have three cats. We have one dog. Peer pressure. So, you know. The dog will turn into a cat eventually. Yeah. I think it's already happening. Anyway. <clears throat> All right. He's back. Right. So, now well, that... Um, oh, sorry, go on. Yeah. Well, this is kind of a customary thing that uh, the so-called slightly, ever so slightly more experienced guy briefs the less experienced guys uh never really done this before <laughs> but i know what it's like to be on the receiving end of a buttload of information that makes you want to just want to kill yourself i'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna do that um doc i believe you already know about zog and his generals briefly from our last Encounter, yes. I'm sorry, what? You know about... <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. He was staring at <laughs> that distance. <laughs> so, <laughs> coffee. right now, the most important, well, probably the most important thing that's going on in this pseudo reality that we're, we're in. There's this uh, Prince of Chaos called uh, Zog, Z-O-G, and um, he has three generals supporting him in his quest for, I would assume, reality domination or something, but basically he's in the process of amassing a giant army to do who knows what, probably something bad. And his three generals, one of them is a guy with four arms. The other one is a dark-skinned lady with a glowing sword. And the last one is some gendered individual. We don't know if it's a man or a woman in a robe with a smiling mask. We've established that in order to defeat Zog, it would be of great benefit to first take down his three generals as they are somehow feeding him more and more power. Now, unfortunately, uh, I'm not the most combative person in the world, and from what I gather, neither are the two of you. But that doesn't mean we can't still help in the effort. So unless the two I have of you some have... Uh, martial arts background, and I'm okay. And I, yeah, I, my parents insisted on traditional training, so I don't know if you really want to go in punch a dude with forearms. 
I, I know. I, I'm not saying I'm I'm at all a I, I know, I know. I'm just, but yeah. if a thug were to try and attempt to rob us, I might be able to defend myself. I'm just throwing it. Yeah, well I'm 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 sure all three of us can defend ourselves from the odd ruffian. But <laughs> taking down all taking right. down a general whole different story. Anyway, that doesn't mean we can't still help, so Obviously, if the two of you have something in mind that you want to do, I'm all ears, but I think since time is kind of of the essence, doing a bit of a recon, information gathering, finding out strengths and weaknesses of the, at least one of the generals could help. It would also provide us with some more information on one of the zones that I personally haven't really explored. Um, so that's one thing we can do. And who knows, if we're brave enough and if the stars align just right, we might even be able to take her down, given the right circumstances, but we'll see. So that's kind of one other thing. One of the things that we might be able to do today. The other thing, which shouldn't take too long, I hope. Um, mm, have either of you been to MMO land? I have not. And neither but, is she. Well, I don't think. I'll happily take you there, but basically we have a deal with these this dwarven kingdom to deliver them vast quantities of spices which uh, we kind of promised without actually having a source for them but anyway that doesn't mean we're not gonna try <clears throat> so um, one of the things we can quickly do is get a truck Head over to Gotham. Again, I don't know if either of you have been there. Um, buy some spices, go back to MMO land, drop them off, and then head on over to Cyberpunk, where one of the generals is, and explore, find out where she is, etc., etc. So that's... Uh, one of the things we can do. Do either of you have any uh, general? The one is the one in Cyberpunk. We don't know her name, but she is a dark-skinned lady with a glowing sword. <clears throat> any questions from either of you about anything? Not just what I mentioned. Uh, did we? Did, did anybody or everybody solve the the riddle in that's printed on the ceiling of the asylum? Mm, I don't even know what the riddle is. As, as I said, I just left. Okay. Do you have the, the riddle written down? Yes. I I, you do, do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, right. Right. Oh. Oh. Got. Okay, Perfect. so we okay, okay, okay. So do you want do you want me to tell them the words or do you want me to tell them the letters? Well, tell okay. So so here's in in a lot of the rooms in the asylum were letters, like written on the ceiling, all written in the same penmanship. Uh. When we wrote all the letters down, oh, fine. Yeah. yeah, they were all written like by the same person. They were written by the same person. Yeah. When we wrote them all down, they they made they they seemed to make words that made sense. So we can give you the letters or the words that we put together. I mean, I'm not really an expert. Well, I do have a skill in cryptography, so. If this is some sort of code, I might be able to decipher it. So yeah, go ahead and uh, tell me what you saw. 
Letters or words? Um, both. Why not? Okay. So for actually, the the words might speed things up, but realize that oh, some yeah, of do the be words rearranged. Yeah. yeah, do the words. Yeah. Then, so. so, um, and I think there's some that we didn't do the words for, but oh, no, mind. I think we did the words for all of them. I think so. Yeah. Um, we have two B sit zog, which now makes sense. Um, should die as in D Y E. Um, will I as in E Y E shadows it present sit regain seeks reading. Um, and then all and I. I think that's it. Uh -huh. uh, well, Zog definitely rings the bell, obviously. Shadows. <laughs> I'm assuming by shadows, they might be talking about the different zones or realms that we're in. Um, the rest? I know. It, it probably needs to be shuffled into a logical order it's just that when we first figured out all of this we had no idea who zog was or what the situation was or anything yeah so, basically he is the prince of chaos we weren't even sure if that was yeah. a real word or not actually we're like what is yeah. that <laughs> the, the yeah, one thing uh, is that this yeah. is only one of at least 20 plots that was brought up in just one session <laughs> yeah and we may not have found like all the words or oh. i may have written written some of the words down wrong so there's that i don't think so i verified too i believe that that's the most likely combination of letters to make the words but mm. i can go back and look but i'm pretty sure that tell you what if um oh before i forget i did turn to my backpack run my around a little and i pulled out a little silver bracelet and I handed over mm. to Ali. Obviously, I encrypted it and handed mm. over to you. It looks like uh, uh, an unor un uh, it doesn't have uh, uh, ornaments on it and stuff. It's just a plain silver bracelet he gives you. But before he does that, he, he taps on it and then like a hollow screen thing. Actually, uh, yeah, this works everywhere. Hollow screen thing comes up and then he like taps a bunch of stuff. It looks like it's a super high tech uh, communications device and such. And uh, please uh, uh, let somebody know or let Pete know that she has access to the in game board and stuff now. Yeah. Congratulations. Yay. So, uh, with this. I, I, actually, I had a thought too from the asylum. How did you get out of the asylum? Mm. I broke out of the window. Okay. So. We, we created a gate. So I don't know if it's actually, now that I understand a little bit more about gates, so all the other gates that you guys have shown me have been permanently sort of where they are. This one seemed to be one that you could you could draw and fill in and then leave. Oh. And it led to Burlington. It was... So, so we ran into a statue of the god of Pleiades, I think it was. The god of, the god of doors or entryways or gates in, okay. in the asylum. Okay? It had a riddle on it about the, the midnight door. So then we went down to the basement, and there was a chalk, a chalk outline of a door on a wall and a can of black paint. And we filled in the chalk outline with the black paint, and then we were able to go through the door, and it ended up in Burlington in an accountant's office, whatever that's with. So, uh, I don't know if that means it's possible to to create our own gates, or to if there was something special about the paint, or there was something special about the chalk. Well, I don't, um... I don't know, but the ability to be able to create a gate where you had none might be really beneficial to all of us if we get trapped somewhere. Yes, and okay, so that specific gate, my assumption is 
it's specific to the asylum. But, now that you mention it, there, I do have a way of technically creating a gate. It, bas- it goes to this other zone called the halfway in. Uh, I can take you there if you want to have a look. It's basically um, a safe zone for travelers such as ourselves. No fighting allowed. If you do, you'll be kicked out permanently. The only problem is um, you need to recite this Latin um, phrase, which I can attempt to to do, but my Latin isn't the best. And if I do this, then the two of you just say what I say and you can come with me. Um, If you'd like, I can take you there. Once you're there, they'll give you this special chalk, which you can then basically draw the portal, and you'll be able to go there whenever you like. Assuming you can recite the Latin phrase. Okay, so, yeah, I, like Latin. To... I think Allie has some Latin. Yeah. Oh, you do? Well, uh... <laughs> Everybody speaks Latin except you. Well, doctors <laughs> have to take it, because a lot of doctor stuff's in Latin. <laughs> uh, Logan, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Did we, um, because I know... Kate mentioned it yesterday. Did we tell the two um, siblings the Latin phrase of in the embassy? Yes, yes. Uh, well, it's, oh, not, okay. it's not a phrase. It's a lengthy prayer to Jupiter. Okay, the, yeah, prayer to Jupiter. That's what I meant, sorry. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so if the two of you would like access to this realm, I can take you there real quick. It's nothing special, but there are interesting individuals there, and you will have access to it in the future. Should you need to run away for some reason, you can just say this prayer. It takes five or ten minutes. Twenty. And then you can... Well, five or ten minutes if you speak Latin. For you, twenty minutes to half an hour, because you're like, hey, Gandhi! (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, it's up to you. I can take you over to the Australian Embassy. Doc, I believe you've been there before. Yep. The two siblings can help with the prayer. I'll draw the portal and then we can go through. Would you like to do this? Yeah? Sure. Yeah, I, I think having exposure to as many zones as possible is is beneficial to us. All right, and then um, mm. after that, we can go do the spice run real quick, and then we can do the the main, the meat of this plan for today, which is the recon over in Cyberpunk. So, yeah, off to the embassy. <laughs> no problem. Um, uh... There, there are other clothes and stuff here. If you'd like to uh, uh, change into other clothes, uh, they've got a lot of extra clothes and whatnot. Um, you know where they're where they're at, Freddie. Uh, unless you unless they're comfortable in their orderly or uh, uh, gentleman cowboy clothes. Actually, he looks pretty comfortable in his gentleman cowboy clothes. But I can't speak so much for the really dirty orderly outfit yeah i'd like to change if that's possible <laughs> Go for it. no problem uh you show her where the uh clothes are they're they're uh, handmade sturdy adventuring type outfits uh pretty much genderless clothing with uh uh heavy hobnail boots uh that look like they can track through whatever the heck you need uh with you know a uh, good good traction and stuff on it. These are clothes not made for looks. These are clothes made to last. Good to know. Uh-huh. Um, you, you get changed and whatnot. Um, and then uh, he takes you out of here and you look around. 
and the city itself uh, looks as though it's it's a kind of a, a cowboyish times mixed with some medieval stuff. Uh, everybody uses horses, and everybody seems super busy. Like uh, regardless of age, there's like eight year olds that are out with big. Uh, wooden uh things that are are getting horse dung loaded into them by other kids and stuff because horses are constantly going up and down the streets and there's they fill the streets with poop rather quickly here and so even the kids are working hard at that uh there's people selling uh broadsheet newspapers uh there's people with uh stalls selling fruits and vegetables and things like that it looks like just a very busy city uh the building that you came out of is kind of it's not like a movie theater it's like a theater that uh plays and such like that would go on in uh it oh. has a lot of space and a lot of rooms and things that just reminded me real quick mm -hmm. uh before we leave i want to we can just kind of gloss over it since i know you don't have everything written down but i want to play them the video the movie from Oh, let me see if it'll play because of the tech level of where you're at. Oh, wait, actually, isn't that uh, left in the uh, Australian embassy? Uh, I thought we left it in the white dove. Oh, no, all right. Well, let me see if it works here. White oven. Pardon? Tarot cards for this zone? I haven't been here yet. Oh, you haven't? Yes. Then, uh, and she hasn't been here yet either, so you guys get some cards. Uh, let's see. Corey, you pick up the Wheel of Fortune. And the King of Swords. Jess, you pick up the King of Pentacles and the Nine of Wands. Oh, Freddie, a couple of things too. Uh, yes. So I read, I read what you were posting or what we were talking about on the communicator. And uh, yes. I have, I think I have those missing cards from the one deck the Hangman and the, the cards that oh, were missing. Yeah, we've, uh, I have those. Um, we've completed and, the deck. The deck's complete. Okay, so but I had those yeah. ones that you were looking for on that one. Uh, we could all, we're, well, we're currently in the process of building a second deck. So if you want to drop your cards off at the embassy, Joshua McKay will take them and put them towards the second deck, if okay. that's something you want to do. And basically what happens is when a deck is complete, it activates and becomes magical. And then we've decided, well, with the first deck, which is complete, everyone who contributed their cards to the deck got them back. We haven't decided what to do with the second deck yet, once it's complete. But we're in the process of basically testing to see what all the different cards do. If you read the boards, you'll find all that information. Right. Um, and then... Is there a place to, like, I have the bowling ball still, and I probably don't want to carry it around all everywhere. Yeah, you can leave it in the embassy if you want. Okay, we can leave it in the embassy? Okay, that's what yeah. I'll do. Uh, but I don't know if I, can I have, like, my own locker or something? So Yeah, there's plenty of storage for everyone. Okay. Um, quick out of character note, if you go into the handouts section where your character sheet is and all that. If you go down to Beastkin Lands, you'll see the Australian Embassy. If you press Edit, you can add whatever you want to it at the bottom there. Two. Yeah, there's the, essentially the. Um, I mean, you could put your name on it and stuff, and it would say like uh, Doctor uh, Stevens Bowling Ball or whatever. But yeah. Essentially, the, the PCs have gone with uh, the uh, uh, group sharing of stuff type thing. So, yeah. like, for example, if there's an extra pistol in the shared storage thing, then you'd take it out and delete it off of the shared storage and put it onto your character sheet, for example. Yeah. So yeah. There's, there's a bunch of different gear that they have hidden in different locations around the multiverse. Okay. You guys head through the busy, uh, bustling... Oh, did the uh, projector work? Or... Oh, shit. Let me check. <laughs> got all about the projector. 
halfway. Uh, let's see. You guys are in Gothic. Let me see okay. what we got here. I don't know if this is a magical projectile or what. Ah, give me a willpower times three, Freddy, as you attempt to make this thing go. Okay. Seems to be a tech thing. That would exp Oh, wait, no, you. Uh, it should work, but you're having a problem finding a place to plug it in. Oh. You're holding the plug and looking around. What a lame place, you think. There are no plugins here. You look at the oil lamps. Mm, yes, this may have something to do with it. Mm. Damn it. <laughs> and it's heavy, bulky, and fragile. This is why they fashion reel to reel projectors. Also, you'd have to reload the film into it because it all uh, finished yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Slappity, slappity, slap. So okay. it, it, it looks like a nightmare of. Uh, Pre-internet no, crap. I'm not gonna be, be responsible for breaking another thing. All right. Um, I'll just no worry. It, yeah, maybe someone else. Knows yeah. How to use it. Well, plus they'll be able uh, to read on the in-game board what was on the film eventually. Yeah. But mm. yes, you you can tell that whoever this guy is, he's not really comfortable with the complete lack of technology uh, that's going on here. Um. The the weapons and whatnot that you see uh, some people carrying uh, seem to be uh, not like cowboyish, but they seem to be like plasticky looking guns and such. Um, definitely not regular guns, possibly magic guns or something weird like that. Uh, looks like they have plenty of guards and stuff here. And uh, people dress in a combination of uh cyberpunk cowboy um just plain clothes uh adventuring clothes stuff like that it looks like a huge mishmash of stuff uh there's anything from old led signs that aren't lit up that are advertising stuff uh through things that look very medievally made like painted signs and stuff like that so it's a weird mishmash of different stuff Freddie seems to despise it. Uh, he takes you guys over to a barber shop. There's a uh, guy with a bald head, and he has mutton chop sideburns that come all the way down, uh, almost meeting up in the middle, but carefully clean shaven away. And uh, he says, Abby, what can I do you for? Uh, hot towel for me and my two friends. All right. You guys sit down in the barber chairs. There are four barber chairs, three of you. And he begins to prepare hot towel shaves for all three of you. He doesn't seem to realize one of you doesn't and probably will never need a shave, but he prepares them anyway. And he asks Freddy, where are you going back to? This can land. All right. And them as well? Yes, please. Okay. And he puts hot towels over all of your faces. And when he pulls them off, he's turned into this otter headed dude with the fur in the pattern of mutton chops. And he goes, Shave? I'm alright, thanks. Thanks, Clem. No problem. Uh, there's the old Disney film, I don't know if everybody's seen it, called Robin Hood, where everybody is like humanoid yeah. body and they've got different animal heads and stuff. That's this place. Everybody's got different animal heads. Um, let's see, uh, has uh, Stephen been here before? Yes, I've been here. All right. Ali hasn't, I don't believe. Fortunately, there's no sand loss for this. Is It's a very Disney-feeling place. Uh, Al, you pick up uh, two new cards, uh, the World and the Nine of Cups. Al, please. Oh, no, wait, I wouldn't have you that. Never mind. Right. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, eventually this will lead her, uh, Corey, to uh, wanting to buy a Rider Waite tarot deck so she can look at the yeah, but cards. And then you can summon Satan with it later. It'll be fun. Have, have, that's yeah. great. Oh, you have one. Wow. Of course. Cool. Of course. <laughs> nice. Yes. It's amazing how often that keeps coming up in my campaigns. I don't know. Anyway, uh, he then leads you through the streets. This is, it's it's cowboys meets uh, uh, giant 
furry type people. And they all seem very nice to you guys. And they're like, hello, Australians. I, I whisper to them, just don't stare, play along. Hello. Hey, mate. They like that. And they, 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 all of them are just greeting you and stuff. You notice a lot of the guards are rhinoceroses. And uh, everybody's got rifles uh, as far as guards and stuff go. The average person seems like they'll either not be armed or carry a pistol or something like that. Uh, the town or town city you're going through seems to be a walled affair. Um, everybody uh, kind of it feels like a frontier town, you know, old west frontier town. And then he takes you over to a grand strip. There's like this big freaking fortress in the middle and against one of the walls of the fortress inside of the wall of town is this huge official looking embassy made of stone it's beautiful they're working on demolishing some buildings that are close to it and building a wall around it to make big embassy grounds and stuff and there's australian flags flying outside and there's several guards they salute when they see you guys coming and they're like hello good day hello Hello, uh, we're here to drop uh, off a few things. Yes, sir. Uh, they just opened the door for you and such. Like, yes, you belong here, obviously. Uh, I, yeah, I'll, I'll show them inside. There's a, a elf guy. He's probably in his uh, mid-teens, around 18 to 20 years old looking. Definitely an elf, pointed ears and all of that. He's wearing a uh, tunic that has an Australian flag on it. And he says, hello, welcome to the Australian Embassy. Ah, welcome back, Freddy. Uh, how may I help you? Uh, my friends, uh, well, we need to access the storage real quick, and I'm going to need What would you like help. to put into the storage for you? Come this way. Let's get you sit sit down and have a meal. All right, I'll go with yeah. They, uh, there's also an elf girl about the same age. These are obviously brother and sister. Looking at them, you can tell they're brother and sister. There's uh, some old looking, very small bird, like a finch in a cage, although the door is kind of partially open and it seems to be muttering to itself. <laughs> it looks at you guys and goes, ah, the fuck, the neighborhood's going downhill now and says, Tail <laughs> cracker. It takes it. Damn right, it mutters. <laughs> hey, Doc, are you interested in uh, learning to cross magic? Oh, that's all I'm here for, me, Grouse is the bird. Teaching you magic. You are incapable of learning anything, monkey boy. It gives your life purpose. <laughs> what are you talking about? It squats at you and ruffles its feathers and paces back and forth on its perch. It looks highly irritated. Guys, I'll ask it if it would teach you magic. I can but hear you. I'm right here. <laughs> you can't hear anything. You're a parrot. I'm not a fucking parrot. <laughs> it's like kind of hopping up and down on its perch in rage. Would you like another cracker? Yes. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> you want to learn magic? Yes. That it sounds attempts, it attempts to teach you air magic. Unfortunately, it is the worst teacher imaginable. <laughs> it goes off on tangents. It swears a lot. Uh, first, it's going to try teaching uh, uh, Ellie. It, uh, you have no idea what he's babbling about. And then it tries to teach Stephen. Yeah, he is just the worst teacher ever. He just rambles at you guys until you get bored and wander off. I mean, I learned from him, so... Uh... Yeah. Maybe you can teach them, lazy human. Well, maybe I will. I don't believe no. you. I don't think you know how to cast anything. You suck, it says. I'll have you know. I can... Shut up. Oh, wait. <laughs> Bird looks very self-satisfied, like... Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to take them into the dining room. <laughs> You guys go in the dining room. It's, it's uh, uh, this is the smaller, comfortable, kitcheny type feeling dining room as opposed to the let's have 50 people over for a big official embassy dinner type dining room. 
Um, although they probably have one of those here. This place is huge. If you wander off by yourself, you may get lost. You may never be seen again. Uh, fortunately, there are guards that may help you figure out where you went. But yeah, you guys all get sit down. They make you uh, some lovely stew. Um, you're kind of curious about what kind of animals go into the stew because these guys all seem to be animals. Are they cannibalistic? These questions come to mind, but the stew tastes good. So, you know. And uh, he says, uh, so what were you wanting to put into storage? I look at the two dog. I okay. have a magic bowling ball I would like to put in the storage. I show it. Yeah, he's happy to take it. Uh, uh, yeah. A um, human skull is in there. Who did that? I don't know. And actually, uh, now that Allie's here, I, I was hoping maybe she could look at the skull and see if she can figure out anything forensically about maybe where it came from, how old it might be, what kind of skull it is. He, he gets a bowl to put the bowling ball into so it doesn't roll around. And there's a human skull inside the bowling ball. Give me uh, forensics or forensic anthropology or whatever skill you think would apply there. I don't have straight. You have forensics. It's in, under F. Oh, okay. Now using your new character sheet, you're able to roll it with class and style. Yeah. Because Corey was inputting because you make him work for you, and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, okay. It appeared to be a human male, uh, approximately age 30. Um, it looks like uh, he didn't receive any special dental work. It's hard to tell because it's encased in a clear glass, or not glass, but crystalline bowling ball. But, you know, so you're rotating it around. Um, he didn't, it's a very average human skull. There's not a lot that can really be told about this individual. And you're guessing on the gender and stuff like that based on mysterious things that only you know about. But with a crit, yeah. So definitely, and it's a real skull. So, yeah. You're uh, not sure. Yes, really. hmm? yeah, so if you could store this for me, I would appreciate that. Certainly. He gets your name, sticks it on a uh, tag on the bowling ball bag, puts the bowling ball back into the bowling ball bag, and says, anything else to uh, go into storage? Do you have any of the cards you wish to turn in? We take those as oh, well. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll hand in my two cards as well. Mm-hmm. Are the cards of any use? Wait, I have a question. Are the cards of any use if I don't turn them in, or should I just like give him all my cards? Right now, they're useless. So okay. if you want to keep them in a safe place, this is a good place. Or if you want to carry them with you, that's up to you. I think hmm. I'll just keep that's... them here. So I have a lot of them. Great. Uh, if you could make a uh, list of uh, the cards that you're turning in, and when you gain access to the in-game uh, board, just post, I'm, I've turned in these cards uh, to the embassy then that will make uh, people very, very happy. I also gave you a card for asking uh, if it'd be better to turn them in or keep them because we've had some people that were like, it might be valuable, I'm keeping it forever, and it never <laughs> does anything for them, so. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I will turn mine in too. Um, I, I didn't want to withdraw anything from the embassy while we're here. We have a lot of different stuff in each of the rooms. If you need a room for the night or whatever, is a uh, local tech uh, pistol, rifle, shotgun with holsters and ammo for all of those. Also, um, we've been instructed if you'd like anything from the future, we have rifles and pistols that are some sort of future thing, but I don't know what they are. There's also some. Uh finely crafted swords and armor from the dwarves if you want any of those or weapons in general if you want any of those mm -hmm. um basically it's all in the storage manifest so to speak 
we yeah. keep a, an inventory of what we have. They, so they don't allow anybody except the ambassador down there, but they're happy to go and get anything you would like. <clears throat> I am looking. Allie, do you see where the storage thing is for the uh, uh, embassy? Uh, one second. I'm sorry. I wasn't able to hear what you were saying because I was talking to my sister, but I think I got most of it. Eventually, after we get you hooked enough on this game, you'll just throw things at them and scream for them to leave you alone. <laughs> yeah, oh, um, I was going to do that. <laughs> it um, is the I, land, siblings. I would like to withdraw... Hmm. How many should I take? You know what? I'll take... I'd like four of the black grenades, please. The black um, spherical devices. Okay, keep in mind they're about this big each, a little bit heavy. Yeah, uh, they should fit in the backpack, yes? Yeah, if you don't have a lot of air crap in your backpack, they'll be just fine. You're worried that they'll bash up your laptop, especially if you fall off a building or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm not having it with you right now. Mm. Oh, wait, no, that's a good point. I did it my hacking oh, yeah. up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Plus, they 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 definitely fill you with dread when they're on you because that's one of the the fun items in the campaign that there's no save for half damage. You may just <laughs> die horribly, and everybody I'll, else I'll, with you. I'll take two, and I'll give um the duck one and say to him, "This is a dangerous futuristic." Grenade. It's a ball with it. this big, black, feels kind of evil looking, and there's a hole in it that you could probably fit your pinky into. Don't okay. put your pinky in the hole. That's how you activate it. Okay. Um, we might need this just as a backup in case we shit goes down, basically. So just, uh, yeah. Um, uh, I... <laughs> okay, I got it. Are you giving one? Are you giving one to uh, 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 Ali as well? Would you like one? I don't think I trust myself with dangerous objects. <laughs> Take a card. That's hilarious. Hold on, let me grab my blanket. Uh, do the do the futuristic laser pistols? Would they fit in the holster for that I have? For uh, the... they have they have their own holsters and stuff. I might take one of those, just uh... Just FYI, they use laser pistol skill to shoot. Oh, it's a specific skill, it's not pistol. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I'll just stick with the pistol then. Good. Cool. <laughs> you can take a sword if you want, or spear, or whatever. It's up to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do need to trade up the sword, I think, to like a regular sword. Uh, do you have a dwarven sword uh, listed on the uh, manifest? Yeah. If you want to give him one of those, uh, you could. Wearing a sword, as Corey well knows, pain in the ass. But yeah, it's um, they can be useful uh, though. It's uh, halfway uh, down the list. Yeah. Now the dwarven swords are special in that their damage is stepped up one place. So instead of a D8, D10. Uh, also, once your strength hits 80, then it goes up another place. Cool. Yeah, so just um, if you take one where it says 3x swords, just put 2x on that. Gotcha. Just so okay. everyone knows. And... Now, if you want any tooling up stuff, don't be shy. They have yeah. plenty of weapons and armor and stuff like that here. I would definitely probably take a weapon. Uh, if you don't have one, because uh, last time I went out, I, I we were attacked by these crazy hairy murloc things. And, the and thing. we might get attacked by them again. So, yeah. yeah. Might carry around a picture of uh, of uh, Alex. <laughs> and just show it to him next time they try and jump me. <laughs> I'll make me call this guy. <laughs> Alex definitely likes killing the crap out of things. Well, he, he just 
he just terrorized the crap out of those guys last time we were there. <laughs> were you were you there when they uh, drove the car in to their lair and did donuts and then no, no. Uh, took a dump in front of their door and left it there and drove off laughing? No, it was when we when he went back in there. They recognized oh. him. They tried to kill him, and then he just massacred like <laughs> all kinds of. Them. <laughs> Chased him through the portal, killed him on the other side. It was. It He's a bad good. man. He's a bad man. Eventually, uh, 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 Jesse will get to uh, game with him, and she'll be like, "So he's here to cause mayhem, basically." <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, uh, Jess, please uh, reduce your hand to back down to four and check if you got any reds. Uh, oh, don't forget. Yeah, um, sorry, I keep forgetting uh, those exist. For the, for the check in forensics. Yes, yeah, don't forget to check the forensic box or tick the oh, dot or yeah. whatever. It is. Freddie, if I needed to pick up a regular book that is available, like during the, you know, regularly available in the 21st century, where where would I go for that? Do you think, or where could 21st I? 21st century, my man. I've been asking myself the same question. <laughs> 21st century doesn't seem to be a place. No, I know, but I mean, like, like, do you think there's a place we could get a book or a copy of a book? Or... There, well, what kind of book are you looking for? It's, it's called 78 Degrees of Wisdom. Mm. Oh, what no, I can't hear you. What year was it published in? Uh, it was published in... Da -da -da -da. Hold on, I'll tell you this second. Is that nineteen seventy eight? Am I correct in that? Eden Gray? Yes. Yep. Nineteen seventy eight. Hmm. That was just a guess, by the way. I'm no, 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 no. Wait, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. it is seventy eight degrees of wisdom. To do, the paperback was in 2007, but uh, hmm. but it, it was published way before then. I know that. If it's post 2000, mm, there is one place, but that would involve. Mm, let's just say I'm not a skilled enough walker to take you there just yet. Okay. I can, but it's tricky. Um, okay. But if it was published in the 50s or 60s, mm -hmm. I can probably find one in Gotham. Uh, if it's... Man, man, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Wait, let me... I'm, th I'm trying to find the original oh, okay. uh, published date. Mm -hmm. At 1980 is when it was originally published. 1980. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know of. Uh, let me have a look through my notes. If there's any zone that might have that. The quest for the book. It, well, it, it, it's an excellent guide to to tarot, and it may help oh. us with. Yeah, we've um. The tarot card collection look? stuff. We've looked in the library already for um, basically books on tarot, can't find anything. But um, there might be one in Cyberpunk because that's in the future. Maybe there's a copy lying around digitally, but again, I've never been there. Kind of properly been there. But um, yeah.